you know, so I'm autoimmune is, is 100% a gut issue. You know, a lot of thyroid mm. issues, a lot of, you know, hormonal issues, you know, stem from gut. You know, I've had women who have had lost their periods and I've got them on gut supplements and within a few months, periods come back. You know, you can't fake that type of result. So it's, you know, mm. the microbiome is responsible for so many different things. And as you say, if we don't protect it properly, then this is where, uh, you know, ill health and, and disease is allowed to form. Welcome to the Radical Health Rebel podcast with your host, Lee Brandon. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave a five-star rating and a warm review. And now, here is Lee, the Radical Health Rebel, with this week's podcast. Heather Pearson, welcome to the Radical Health Rebel podcast. Thanks for coming on the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you. Yeah, um, you too. I'm really looking forward to this. It's been a while, isn't it? It's been a long time. Very long time. So today's episode is entitled Gut Health with Heather Pearson. So when looking at the physical body for me, the most important aspect is gut health and the gut microbiome in particular. In my own work, I've seen how gut health and the gut microbiome can affect things like sports performance, pain, weight management, skin conditions, energy, clarity of thought, immunity and autoimmunity, uh, autoimmune conditions, mental health, and much more. When we consider that there are more microbial cells in the human body than there are human cells by a nine to one ratio, and about a 99.5% of our DNA is not human, but microbial, you begin to see its importance. So I'm really looking forward to this deep dive into the world of gut health with my very good friend, Heather Pearson. So Heather, can we kick things off by sharing with the audience a little bit about you, your upbringing, your professional education, your history and your career today, and what let you, led you to learning about gut health in particular? Well, it's been a journey. Uh, so I, uh, uh, in my career, I did start, um, working in television and then I had a very severe car accident, uh, 21 years ago and eventually decided to change industry and start helping people because I was left with so many injuries and eventually lots of medical issues. So, um, and that kind of led me education wise to studying around the world, learning from the best of the best uh, about all sorts of treatments and training and psychology and, and, and all sorts. So uh, the more I learned um, through all these courses and education, the more I applied these to myself and my, my patients and athletes. And, and as you know, that becomes experience and the more experience you get, uh, it leads you to other avenues. So it's been a lot of years, a lot of education um, I, I, I am a, a little bit obsessed with learning, but along the way, because I've had so much of my own experiences with, uh, the gut and lots of, uh, associated issues, um, I've dived even deeper as the years have gone on. So, um, that's kind of where I've got to really career wise. Um, and, uh, yeah, personal experience with the gut is you can't beat personal experience. Sometimes, you know, research mm. will tell you a lot of what's going on inside, but research can't and it can't tell you how things feel or recognize certain symptoms, uh, whether it's a verbal symptom, a physical symptom or something you can you can visually see. So that for me, personal experience is, you know, always got to be a, a winner, especially when you're helping people who are going through uh, certain issues, whether it's a, you know, a gut problem, diarrhea, constipation, or a mental health issue that's sleep related with, you know, gut, sleep, brain. So, um, so yeah, personal experience has been quite a big journey for me. Big one. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about your personal experience? So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> um, when I had my car accident, I didn't realize at the time that I had a brain injury which I know we'll probably come to at some stage. Uh, when you have a brain injury uh, with that sort of severity, you've got instant gut health dysfunction, it, literally within 24 hours. 
Um, but I also had um, a lot of heavy metal fillings, uh, the silver fillings, the amalgams uh, from when I grew up, when dentists were getting paid to put fillings in your mouth. And so, again, I didn't realise um, the severity of, of uh, heavy metal toxicity. And that's been a huge cause of many of my gut issues. And once you, your gut starts going downhill and, and um, into decline, you're opening the door to all these nasty infections. And, uh, and eventually this unhealthy gut, for me, has led to autoimmune issues, which is quite a steep hill to climb back from by the time you realise you've mm. got an autoimmune disease. And, and of course, along the way, it's learning about, well, how do you know? You know, you've got symptoms um, and that comes with testing methods. And then once you do the test, it's knowing then how you resolve your issues with the, the test results. And again, a lot of that comes from symptoms. Sym symptoms will tell you a lot and then the testing will tell you a lot. Um, and then mm. and then you have the resolve, which is, again, for me, it's been a journey of not just working with one specialist. Um, it's also been with my own research um, and trial and error with experimentation. So, but, uh, but yeah, quite a big part of that is, is symptoms and not just gut symptoms. It's also sleep and it's also brain and they're all so interlinked. So yeah, it's been a, mm. an experience that I'm still going. <laughs> so mm. it's, it's, it literally is work at work in hand. So, yeah, yeah. So I imagine there's some people listening to this and they're thinking, well, how, do, how can a brain injury cause an issue with the gut? Can you explain a little bit about that? Well, there's, there's something called the, the gut brain axis. And that is, uh, as you know, there's, there's lots of, of cells uh, in the neurons, in the nerves, as well as there's lots of cells in the gut and they communicate with each other, particularly through the big, the big boy, Mr. Vegas nerve, uh, and, and mm -hmm. the way the nerves travel and <clears throat> all these cells travel up and down with this, this wonderful uh, system. Um, anything that happens to the brain will affect the gut because of this communication with each other. They're like brother and sister. Um, so mm. a, as is said, the gut is the second brain. So where these, this, this lovely uh, system we've got breaks down, if something goes wrong with the brain, uh, li automatically the gut is injured also. And the, a brain injury is very complex. It's not like a muscular injury that you can do some exercises and have some treatment and be along your way. Brain injury is for life. Um, but but mm. uh, with the gut, the relationship is so strong because of this system. The, the, we've got obviously got the enteric system. Um, and uh, the communication is so strong. So unfortunately with a brain injury, when your brain is good, your gut is a little bit better. If your gut's good, your brain's going to be better. And when you're looking at something yeah. like leaky gut, which <clears throat> a lot of people uh, have heard of, of this leaky gut, if you've got leaky gut, you'll have leaky brain. So if you've got a brain injury, you know you're going to have leaky gut to an extent. So, uh, yeah, brain injuries, <laughs> I could probably talk to you about for about uh, another whole day, I think. <laughs> well, we... <clears throat> We can we can do another podcast on that. Oh, I'd love to. Another love time. To. So you mentioned leaky gut, and I'm going to come back to that. Mm. But before we before we talk a bit more about that, if you think of, let's say, someone's listening to this and they've not really looked into gut health per se, how how would you define gut health to someone that's probably you know never never really kind of considered it? So gut health, I would describe as your your immune system most people understand immunity so your immune system is your health whether you're in good health and the majority 70 80 percent of your immune system is in your gut so mm -hmm. gut health means healthy brain good sleep and general good health and that's the the, the basic layman's terms and if your gut health, which is full of this, well, as I explained to people, gut flora, as it's called, flora in Latin, 
means flower. And for healthy flowers, we need healthy soil and we need water and hydration. So if you think of your gut as this thriving uh, flower garden, you know, we, we need to keep it healthy. We need the balance. We need the balance of sun, of water, of, of food um, and, and also happiness and positivity. And when we mm. lose that imbalance, that's when gut health um, starts to decline. And then that can lead to lots of mental issues, lots of sleep issues um, and lots of disease, which it was uh, Hippocrates way back when, BC, mm. um, you know, <clears throat> he said, you know, most diseases can be fixed through the gut. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That's certainly my experience as well. Um, so just coming on to what we touched on just now was, was leaky gut. Do you want to explain what, what leaky gut is and, and perhaps what that can lead to? Yeah, so leaky gut basically is um, like a, a carpet. So in, in your gut, you, you've got this, this carpet where you have the layers of, you've got the fluffy layer and then underneath you've got this thick base. And so the fluffy, or as we know, they're called villi, they, uh, they should be very packed full close together. And what happens with leaky gut eventually is these, these, the fluffy bits of the carpet, they start to, to branch apart and they start to get these, these, these little holes where now food is not absorbed into the, the fluffy bit of the carpet. And then food ends up going straight into the bloodstream in, in, instead of into the intestines where it should be absorbed and broken down. And so the problem is, is, is the holes get bigger and then uh, more of them start happening. Uh, and so the more holes that you get in this, in the, in the fluffy bit of the carpet um, means poor digestion. And then eventually that starts leading to, um, other issues. The problem is, is when you don't absorb food, you don't break food down, you don't gain the nutrients. And then that's, that leads to other issues where we're looking at specifically, um, uh, bacterial infections, because then it's like opening the door to any nasty that can walk in because you haven't got your protective barrier anymore, mm. your protective wall. Mm. And so, um, that's when you can start getting, uh, bad bacteria, yeast overgrowth, like candida, um, any type of bacterial infection, Klebsiella is, is quite a popular one. So, uh, and then before you know it, you've got one infection and another infection and yeast overgrowth. And the biggest one word I will probably describe gut health, which is, is the number one is inflammation. And once you have inflammation mm. in the body, inflammation is what leads to disease and inflammation is, is what also causes stress and stress and inflammation have this relationship. Stress causes inflammation, inflammation causes stress and they work together. And once you have this leaky gut that leads to inflammation, then the, the, the circle starts to uh, get worse and worse and worse until you start to fix it. So it's a cascade of events of leaky gut. And everyone has different severities of the, if you think of the holes. Um, but the good thing about leaky gut is there are lots of things and uh, uh, supplements and natural products that you can take to start filling those holes effectively, plastering them, mm. as I call it, sticking loads of plaster at the holes and start filling them. Okay, I'll I'll come back and ask you about how you can do that. But before before I ask you that, can you talk a little bit more about how the the digestive tract or the intestinal tract is part of the immune system or protective system of the body? Like, similar to like you got the skin is the barrier mm. from the outside, but obviously the digestive tract is more of the protection to the inside of the body. Do you want to go into that? Yeah, a I bit? mean, talking about the, 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 the villi, <clears throat> the fluffy bits of the carpet. So um, uh, ultimately, we need balance of good bacteria, uh, uh, good bacteria and bad bacteria. We, we have yeast, uh, we have candida, but when it overgrows, then it becomes dangerous. 
So if we don't have that protection, it's like having a, an army of soldiers and that these soldiers start disappearing, then you can't fight infections. You, you can't put, uh, produce the co correct proteins and antibodies that you need to fight off infections. So when you come up against an infection, you need to have that protection. Um, one of those reasons for the protection is short chain fatty acids. But if, you're, if you've got a poor diet and you're not getting enough uh, fiber, you can't produce the short chain fatty acids, um, which you need mm. to, for your protection barrier. And that protects you from inflammation. So, so mm. if we, again, obviously coming to diet, um, if you're not producing the, the short chain fatty acids, which are a huge part of your protection of your gut lining, um, then it leaves you open to invaders, to foreign invaders. And that's, that's the key really to inflammation is protection. Mm. And a lot of that comes from not just diet. Diet is a huge part of gut health, but also from stress. And stress is probably one of the biggest things because it, it, we have this gut brain relationship. Stress in many different ways. And there are so many different stresses, physical, med medication, emotional um, stresses that, um, that will lead to a decline in our gut barrier wall. And once that starts opening, it's literally opening the cross bridge to a castle and letting all the nasties come in. So the protection of the gut lining is so important and stress starts to break that down mm. very, very quickly. So stress, I'd say stress plus sleep, uh, also, because one of the things uh, that research does show is an inverse relationship between sleep uh, and melatonin. So if you don't sleep, you don't produce enough melatonin, melatonin goes down. Melatonin is very, very closely linked to good gut bacteria. So, uh, and we have 400 times more melatonin in the gut than in the pineal gland. So melatonin is, is pretty important. <laughs> Uh, to, in terms mm. of gut health, and, and again, this this comes back to the the protection of the gut lining, because if you're not producing uh, melatonin, you don't sleep. If you don't sleep, that affects the gut, and and you just have this again another cascade. If you're not sleeping properly, which again can come from stress, so it's all interlinked. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, if we don't have the protection, it's like not having the correct antibodies. Uh, for any infection if we don't have our protection in our gut lining there are so many processes that don't happen um, <clears throat> which uh, a huge part of that is sleep and the brain mm. yeah one, one of the ways I look at the digestive tract so if you think mouth to anus mm. you know it's like a tube isn't it yeah basically it's basically like a tube and if you if you compare it to say like a bagel or a donut, you know, with a hole in the middle, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, on, on our bodies, our immune system is our, on the outside is the skin, mm -hmm. but on the inside it is basically the tracks from the, from the mouth to the anus. Yeah. And what I try and get across to people is that, you know, if you look at the bagel, the hole in the middle is not the bagel right? It's a hole, it's a hole in the middle. And if you think, you know, if something's in your mouth or it's in your stomach or your small <laughs> intestine, your large intestine, it's not actually in your body. It's in the hole. And what lines that tract is the microbiome mm. of each different area, which is different. Yeah. And that microbiome helps to protect you mm. or your, or should say your bloodstream from being exposed to things that it shouldn't be exposed yeah. to all the nasties. Yeah. And obviously probably the most important part of that is your small and large intestine, I would yeah, say hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, it's where it's the majority of our, you know, 70 to 80% of the immune system of that long tube is, is in the small and large intestines and they both have different jobs. As I was saying, the, you know, the short, mm. short chain fatty acids are specifically where fibers fermented in the large colon and the small intestines do majority of the work for absorption of macronutrients. So, um, but mm. we need protection for both. 
And if you don't have that protection, mm. that's where you see, you know, and so many, like we were talking earlier, you know, you get, there's so many cancer, there's so much cancer around, there's so many autoimmune issues that, you know, come about. And so much of that, um, you know, so I'm autoimmune is, is 100% a gut issue. You know, a lot of thyroid mm. issues, a lot of, you know, hormonal issues, you know, stem from gut. You know, I've had women who have had lost their periods and I've got them on gut supplements and within a few months, periods have come back. You know, you can't fake that type of result. So it's, you know, mm. the microbiome is responsible for so many different things. And as you say, if we don't protect it properly, then this is where, uh, you know, ill health and, and disease is allowed to form. So. Yeah. And it makes sense that, you know, 70% of our immune system is in the gut because that's, that's where we are absorbing nutrients. That's where we are taking things from the outside into our bloodstream. Yeah. So it makes sense that most, most of our immune system is in that, in that area to try and stop the, the baddies, so to speak, yeah. getting in. Yeah. As I call it, the, the uh, of the garden, that's that's the pesticides trying to trying mm. to get into the soil. Mm. But you've got to have your protection. If you don't have the protection, the pesticides will end up coming in and start destroying things. So it's um, mm. yeah, protection is a big thing, and you know we all fight stresses every day. And it's you know there's lots of things you can do for that. One of them is good diet and good sleep. And that's that in yeah. itself, as well as as coping mechanisms for stress as well. One thing you, you mentioned earlier was there are some supplements that people can take to help repair the gut lining. Do you want to share a few of those with us? Yeah, I say, I mean, there's I've got a long list of things that I use with uh, patients and athletes. Mm. Um, I think one of the most, a couple of the most simple things to take to help with the repair of the gut lining, uh, one is glutamine powder, which is um, glutamine mm -hmm. amino acid, which is a protein. And it's a very, uh, very simple powder. It tastes of nothing, um, even just a tablespoon in a small little, little bit of water every day on an empty stomach. So it can be utilized because a lot of people associate glutamine with a protein shake and after a workout, which yes, it does a slightly different mm. job. Um, but <clears throat> specifically for the gut, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, um, glutamine has been known to fuel the cells in the gut and, and to start healing the lining and, and the protection, the barrier wall. And it's it, a very, very cheap, um, powder to buy, very easy to take. And, uh, I've had huge success with, with having people on glutamine. Um, I'd say another one in my, if you'd say like a top, top four is a digestive enzyme. And I have, I've had some patients who they've had long-term gut health. They've had symptoms of, you know, diarrhea or constipation, bloating, etc., And, uh, and they can't do without a digestive enzyme. And what the digestive enzyme does is it, uh, once we take it before food, it will start to line the gut with certain enzymes that help to break food down so we can absorb them. And that's if you do have leaky gut, you won't produce the correct amount of enzymes mm. to break food down and absorb it. So the digestive enzyme gives us that extra help until we start patching up the holes of the leaky gut. Um, to break our fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, to break them down so we can absorb them better and fuel our, our muscles and our, our organs in a much more efficient way. So digestive enzymes, and at one before every meal is ideal. Um, <clears throat> uh, another gut supplement, um, which is, again, something that is very, very, uh, important, which is more specifically for breaking down protein, is HCL and hydrochloric acid. And what I've found over the years, a lot of people have reflux where the food comes back up the esophagus and, and sometimes back into the mouth. Um, or you have this burping of, of food that you can taste uh, again in the throat. And reflux is very uh, common. And I went through the journey of this 
And mm. when I went through that journey, I was told I didn't have enough stomach acid. Uh, sorry, I had too much stomach acid mm. and I needed to suppress the stomach acid. So I was given anti-acid uh, and that was many years ago. I've since learned, actually, I didn't have enough stomach acid. And that's mm. something, actually coming back to the brain injury, that's something that happens instantly is when your gut starts to decline, um, if it's an, if it, from a, a brain injury, uh, you instantly uh, have less stomach acid. It's something that happens literally in an instant. And so if, you're, if you don't have enough acid, when food enters the, the stomach, you can't break down food properly, specifically for protein. As you know, we need protein for all sorts of different processes in the body, very important mm. processes for growth and repair. And so, um, so eventually I learned about this HCL. Actually, I was in need of HCL. And at the time I'd been having these, these really severe stomach cramps three months after I started taking medication for my uh, pain. And uh, six years later, after having all these stomach cramps, twice I ended up in hospital from the severity of these cramps. And, um, and I started taking HCL within three months. They were gone, those stomach cramps. And, uh, and I, again, I've had a lot of my patients and athletes on HCL. And uh, whatever symptoms they've had have improved literally within two or three weeks. So HCL is a very, very important one. Something I've found a lot of people have uh, way less stomach acid than they should, way less. Um, <clears throat> the, the one thing I would advise with HCL, uh, which I do in my book, <laughs> just squeeze that in there, um, <laughs> is to always start, I changed the way I administer HCL. Um, uh, the the average is a 648 milligram capsule, which you typically take two with each meal, three times a day is the average. Uh, but I've since changed that. I prefer to get people on a, a much lower dose to start with because if your gut is quite leaky and your gut is it actually in quite a bad place um, and you take a high dose of HCL, it can actually make you worse. And so, so now I start people on a very low dose, sometimes just a digestive enzyme that's got some HCL inside it, just to get mm -hmm. your stomach used to, to gaining a little bit more stomach acid so it doesn't react adverse to, adversely to it. And then gradually over time, dependent on symptoms, then we start increasing the dose of HCL. So there's a lot of, of this available on the internet. And this would typically be, be around sort of three, 350 milligrams of HCL. And I typically would start people on just one a day, then two a day, then three a day, because the maximum is six, two with uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. So mm -hmm. you gradually get the gut used to having it. It's something that you've got to go quite gentle uh, that I found from dealing with patients and athletes. But the biggest... The biggest thing that I've, I've found has been I've had the most success with, which you still need the glutamine, the digestive enzyme, the HCL. But the thing I've had the most success with, with the gut is bone. If you're enjoying this podcast so far and want to watch the full unedited version, head on over to our Patreon channel at www.patreon.com forward slash Radical Health Rebel, where you can support the podcast for as little as a takeaway coffee and receive lots of other premium content and discount offers. Thanks for watching.